what up y'all welcome back welcome to all the new subscribers man this is awesome we're sitting at 271 solid subscribers man i really appreciate you guys i appreciate all the shares whoever's been sharing um i know sacred and i know birdman shares and whoever else man really appreciate it and it definitely helps out the channel you guys so shout out to all 271 subscribers um, also, uh, the average watch time for, for some of my videos is like three to, to six minutes. So for example, yesterday, yesterday's video, um, it was kind of long, but so far the average view duration has been five minutes and 46 seconds. So, which is understandable, man. Nobody wants to sit down throughout a, a you know 15 16 17 minute video i get that so i'm going to try work work on uh, the length of these videos but once i get talking man i just i just keep talking so um i'm really trying to perfect this craft of of storytelling and try to um stop saying and and ums and all that but i don't know why i, I guess it's kind of like a transition to my next point my next sentence and i don't know why somehow it just just helps right with the with the flow but i know brief pauses are are pretty good for storytelling as well because it allows the the viewer or listener to think about the last statement so so there's that right so today man today we are going to talk about Predators within AA and NA, any of the 12-step groups, any of the 12-step meetings, man. You may have heard about this, the 13th step. So as you know, there's not 13 steps in the 12-step community, man. There's 1 through 12, and each step is huge. There's a lot of meaning behind it, and it can definitely help out people, man. It helped me out. And I'm not here to push AA or NA. I just, I just talk about my experience. I don't go to meetings as often as I did when I was fresh in recovery. I don't. Like I said before, the methadone has somehow worked. I've never been clean and sober this long. Aside from coffee actually not really coffee aside from energy drinks methadone and cigarettes and a whole crap load of water that's basically and soda as well that's that's basically what what is uh what gets me through the day man cheers so if you've been in these meetings you guys you may have heard the term the 13th step and it's basically the dirtbag step. Nobody likes being a dirtbag, but those dirtbags are out there. And you could spot them, you could see them. The last rehab I was at, they took us to outside meetings. And what that means is if they were fully staffed at the rehab, they would have one of the staff members walk us to the meeting because it was just a, a few blocks down the road so whichever clients wanted to go they'd round us up we'd meet um where we got to meet and they would escort us to the meeting so the majority of that meeting that specific meeting was us the rehab clients and we, we went there every day. We used to love going to that meeting. I looked forward to that meeting for many reasons, man, many reasons. That's where I found my sponsor and that meeting helped, um, there I go, um, that meeting helped shape where I am today. <sighs> very, very blessed for that meeting. But the first time I was exposed to a predator within those rooms was at that meeting man it was an older hispanic guy mexican guy i thought he was slick thought he was smooth and 
he had a way with words. And he had a reputation for being that dirtbag. This guy would just sit. Sit right. Right in a position to where he could see everybody. In the meetings. And. And. I would just sit back and watch him. Just because. His eyes would just be filtering throughout the filtering throughout the room, checking out the the new clients that we had, the new the new girls, and you could just tell he was up to no good, man. He's been to so many meetings. Like once you go to these meetings, you obviously get acquainted with the program, get acquainted with everything that's going on, and I could tell he wasn't focused on the meeting. I could tell he would only go to these meetings just to possibly get a phone number. And he normally sat in one certain spot, but there'd be times where he picked out his, his victim, right? And suddenly he would just start moving, sitting closer to said person, right? It was disgusting to see, man. Disgusting. I asked my sponsor, what's up with this guy? He told me, um, just keep your eye out for this guy, especially around your girls in your in your uh in your rehab group. Watch out for them. After after the meeting is done, everybody um just walks up to certain people or the newcomers and um they introduce themselves. And normally at that time, it's really a good time to, as a client or as a newcomer, it's really a good time to approach um, somebody if you're looking for a sponsor. If you liked something that somebody said during one of their shares and it really resonated with you, that would be a good time to walk up and at least thank them for their message. There's always messages in, in, in those meetings. But... This particular individual, he would walk straight up to these girls and just small talk them. Hey, how, how's it going? Is this your first time here? All that stuff, dude. I had to meet a few other people, me and a few of the guys, just had to walk up to, because um, we, we spotted that right off the bat. So we had to walk up and, and uh, I guess, deflect that situation, right? We had to be some, some cock blockers. And and just tell that, that girl, you know, we got to go. And um, there was this one time he uh, he had to get spoken to. He's been spoken to about that. But this one particular time, all the OGs, all the vets in that meeting, all the people that held seniority, um, took him outside and spoke with him. And we we never seen that guy again. We never seen that guy again. I'm glad, man, because I didn't want anything to do with that fool. He was disgusting, man. Who does that, man? He definitely wasn't new to sobriety, to recovery. I just knew his mission was to prey on these girls, man. These innocent girls who are, are going through stuff, man. So many things could have happened. If if she got wrapped up, so many things could have happened. You know, he he may he could have spoke with her and and they could have just left. You know, she could have just left with this guy, and who knows what could have happened? Relapse or even worse, man, even worse. Those are the type of individuals you need to look out for while you're in the in those rooms, man. One last thing about that dude, there was this, this one other time before he, uh, I guess he got asked to leave because we never see him. But one time after the meeting, um, right before we gathered everybody up, we went outside to our rehab van and there was this, this one newcomer, this girl, she was sitting inside his truck. I don't know if she didn't have a ride, but I was like, man, this guy's a fool. He's a real piece of work, dude. Look out for those people, man. Take care of the newcomers. 
as they say in the rooms, they are they are the most important person in that room. Even if they're not trying to get clean, even if they're not trying to get sober, they're there, you know? Their mind is open. Some people are there because they have to be on probation, court order, whatever, but hopefully there's something within those shares. Hopefully there's something within that group that will switch something in the brain to at least have them come back, give them to give themselves a an opportunity, man, to, to change their lives. So they are definitely predators, man. Predators. So that's the 13th step. Thanks for listening.